Good afternoon and welcome to today's session on An Owner's Guide to the Lean and Mean IT Infrastructure by Mr. Vishal Shah. I am Aditi, co-host of the event today. Let me introduce today's presenter, Mr. Vishal Shah, CEO and co-founder of Sinosoft Technologies. He is known as a seasoned technology stalwart, an inventor of specific patented technologies, a writer, a serial entrepreneur, an investor, and most importantly, a go-to guy for the MSMEs. Today, Mr. Vishal Shah will explain how to optimize IT investment to maximize return on investment in IT. He will explain the basic difference in the IT investment approach for a large enterprise vis-a-vis -vis MSME. He will also cover the optimization of investment in hardware and software. He will also give hands-on tips to minimize recurring costs of internet bandwidth, cloud backup, and email services. It will be followed by a live demonstration and question-answer session. By the end of this session, you will have clear, clear visuals of the magnitude of investments in IT and expenses in IT using a lean mean approach. If you have any questions while you watch this demonstration, kindly write in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your Zoom login. The panel will take up the questions at the end of the session. Alternatively, in case you want to ask any question at the end of the session, you may please raise your hand and we shall activate your microphone to ask the question. Vishal, sir, can you please take it ahead from here? Yeah, thank you, Aditi, for the introduction. Good afternoon, all. So today uh, we have this uh, interesting uh, webinar on um, lean and mean IT inf uh, infrastructure for MSMEs. So this particular uh, webinar is meant for MSMEs, uh, either MSME owners or the IT managers working at MSMEs or the channel uh, or uh, IT consultants helping MSMEs to design their IT infrastructure. And uh, when you save the cost, you definitely have better return on investment and we are going to talk about it. So we are going to take four different uh, avenues where we spend money uh, in terms of in IT infrastructure. And we will see how we can uh, save the cost, how we can reduce the recurring cost without compromising with the functionality or without compromising with the security or the quality of the services or user, user experience. So uh, I would say that this is about IT cost saving ideas. I will share these ideas and here, what do we mean by MSME is any company which has, which has around 300 computers or less. It would, it would include five computers, company 10 computers, company 25 computers, company 50, 100, up to 300. Beyond that, uh, we don't consider them as MSME. So all these ideas are strictly applying to MSME setup who have more than uh, one computer and less than 300 computers. So before we uh, move to the agenda uh, of today's uh, session, uh, I request Aditi to uh, launch the poll. Uh, I would like to know uh, the composition of the attendees so that uh, we can make it more relevant. So as we uh, see on the poll results, 64% uh, of the attendees are IT professionals managing SME IT infrastructure. 
and 36% are the system integrators or IT consultants who help MSMEs in designing their IT infrastructure. So we have very, very relevant cloud, uh, crowd uh, today. And uh, now we move to our uh, next agenda. So let us, uh, in order to understand where we can save the cost, we need to understand where we spend money on IT. So ideally, we spend money on IT on different uh, avenues. So let us first see that. So normally, uh, IT expense means uh, uh, investment in hardware that includes desktop, workstation, if the MSME is a kind of uh, engineering or uh, designing kind of organization, they require workstation, uh, laptops, of course, servers, network added storage device, switch and firewall routers. These are the components uh, in which we invest as a hardware. Then we also invest in software, which is operating system on the computers we use. Then some productivity software like MS Office, Word, Excel, Outlook. Then we use Outlook or Thunderbird as some email client for offline access of the emails. We also use technical software like AutoCAD, SolidWorks and uh, such software. We also use ERP or CRM software to run our business. So this is where we spend money on software. Then we spend also, also on the service. We have to use internet and for that we have broadband connection, lease line connection, or maybe 4G, 5G connection, or the dongles. So we spend on internet. We also spend on cloud backup service because we want to take the backup of our data off the premise to take care of any hardware failure or any kind of disaster. We also use email services uh, of Google or Microsoft or GoDaddy, such email services. And we also use antivirus services. This is where we spend recurring cost on IT infrastructure. So these are the avenues where we spend money. And in next four slides, we will see how we can save the cost on hardware, software, on IT infrastructure, on bandwidth, on applications, how we can save the cost. And we will see it and we will also uh, see some examples. So uh, before we move to the next slide, I request Aditi to um, launch the poll, please. So as we see the inputs uh, from the attendees, 50% uh, of the people are concerned about hardware cost, 44% of the people are concerned about high software cost, 6% are concerned about high email subscription recurring cost. So now let us see how we can reduce the cost. So I will move to the next slide and we will first take the hardware. So uh, here, um, I understand that most of the people uh, know IT very well. So they know the concept of refurbished uh, um, computers. So after the pandemic, there are many companies who have um, moved their operations for work from home and still they have been uh, on work from home. There are so many good quality computers available in the second hand market. So let me uh, explain why refurbished computers can save a very huge cost and how it can help any enterprise to enhance the return on investment. So basically uh, in any computer, the most used part is basically um, hard disk. Uh, normally uh, over a 
period of few years, we have to change the hard disk if we want to continue the same particular computer. So what we suggest is, uh, and, 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 and of course, when you have a computer, when you buy a computer system, you have to buy an operating system along with that. So most of the times, the cost of the hardware um, is something and the same cost you spend on the operating system also. So here, uh, there is a very good idea of refurbished computer system uh, where we retain the cabinet, motherboard, processor, ports. We add SSD hard disk to boot the operating system. We have hard disk, normal hard disk to store the data. We change the new, uh, we, we change the RAM to new, we change the SMPS to new. There are 45 quality checkpoints one can apply. And uh, if that particular computer after adding SSD, hard disk, RAM, SMPS, um, if that particular computer is ready, it can extend the life of that particular computer and MSMEs can actually use such refurbished computer systems. So I will share my screen uh, and show you how you can source uh, these refurbished uh, computer systems. Um, let me share my screen one more. So Sinners of Funds, uh, uh, you know, an organization called United SMEs, which is in uh, the business of providing refurbished computer systems. And you can go on unitedsmes.in and you can click on shop. And here you can see a very good uh, um, bargained PCs like uh, i3 a computer can be available at just 14,760 rupees. Normally, if you go for a latest generation i3 computer system, it costs around 41,000 rupees. Similarly, for workstations, which are very, um, you know, different kind of hardware required for designing and all that, i7 kind of processor, which normally costs around 80,000 lakh of rupees, which can be available in 27,000 rupees to 38,000 rupees. So, you can suggest uh, your uh, customers that, they, or you can refurbish the computers for your customers and save a good cost. Apart from that, we can see how we can save the cost on the hardware software part. So we will, I'll share my screen again, and we'll see how we can save the cost on software part. So, uh, I always suggest that um, if you don't want to spend on MS Office, you can very well use WPS Office. It is a very good quality software. In case you don't want to use MS, uh, WS Office and WPS Office and you want to use uh, MS Office only, then there is an option of using MS Office Home, which can be shared by six different people. Uh, you can use this and save cost only if you are not using OneDrive because of otherwise uh, that OneDrive will be shared among those six users and each user can see other users data which you don't want. So you can have MS Office Home uh, shared between six users and you don't use OneDrive. You can also use Thunderbird in place of uh, Outlook. It is equally capable uh, email client and you can save good money. And uh, one more thing is application virtualization you can use. Normally, uh, when we want to give access of our, of our ERP or such an application to a remote user, you know, let's say you want uh, to give access of your tally or some ERP application to your remote user, then normally you either do it through VPN or you do it through terminal server remote desktop. In both the cases, it costs uh, very much on the hardware as well as uh, it costs significantly on the software. Instead of that, you can use application virtualization and you can save a lot of cost. We will see this application virtualization concept in detail in coming slides. So basically, uh, how you save the uh, hardware cost, uh, you can very well um, use refurbished computers, uh, which are refurbished by new SSD, hard disk, RAM, etc. And you can rely on that, depend on them. And you can also change uh, slightly uh, how the users work and you can save huge cost on MS Office or Outlook or terminal server or remote desktop clients. So this is how we can save the cost on hardware and software. Um, uh, and this is how uh, I know so many organizations who have actually saved a lot of cost, including Sinnersoft. 
um, uh, most of our computers are refurbished computers and we never face a problem and everybody knows that we are into very critical service kind of business where our we support our black box uh, uh, for our customers and uh, we cannot have a single downtime you know so uh, still we are depending on refurbished computers and you can also suggest that we are also we are not using any microsoft software we are using thunderbird we are using wps office and uh, application virtualization to save the cost on a software and it has significantly saved the cost basically now we will see the next uh, idea how we can save the cost on standard it infrastructure so normally what do we mean by standard it infrastructure so normally when we want to standardize any it infrastructure we invest in different components of it like we have file server to centralize the data we have storage to save the data file data i'm saying then we have uh, domain controller and active directory to um, have organizational policies it policies on the users then we have endpoint controllers for controlling usb and uh, um, make sure that uh, organizations it policies enforced then we use vpn for remote access then uh, we need to have some mail distribution and vigilance system in case the organization is concerned about dlp then we use a firewall uh, for mitigating any external threats and controlling the internet and then we use backup solution so that our file data our application data our email data is properly backed up and then we use device hardening uh, to control what kind of applications can be used by the users device hardening is mostly used by the companies which are subject to many compliance policies so there are many times customers who mandate certain compliances on their SME vendors and SME vendors have to make sure that there is a device hardening in their particular IT systems so that uh, there is no liberty for the user to do whatever and uh, whatever the user wants to do. Uh, the user will be um, subject to certain specific IT policies in terms of access rights, in terms of restrictions on applications, in terms of restriction on internet and many other things so normally when we want to um, uh, we want to apply you know or we want to establish a very standard it infrastructure we need all these components we need a hardware of file server we need software of file server we need storage in terms of good nas device domain controller in terms of microsoft server active directory endpoint controls to control the usb ports and endpoints uh, VPN for remote access, mail distribution and vigilance, maybe if you are a DLP conscious organization, of course, firewall to mitigate external uh, threats and uh, of course, to control the internet, backup solution to uh, prevent data loss and device hardening for certain compliances. So you need to do all these things. So you need to uh, convince your customer or you need to buy so many things. And when you buy so many things, you buy different hardware, you buy different software, we, you integrate it and you then maintain it. In the hands of the customer, it is very expensive and it is very complex also. So many a times SME customers don't adopt all these things fully and keep their IT vulnerable. So <clears throat> in order to convince the um, uh, SME owners, you know, that uh, they need uh, this kind of system, uh, they have already got uh, exposure to their customers' mandatory requirements. They have seen the world and they would like to, you know, have such systems in their own organization. But when they come to know that it requires uh, so many different hardware components, so many different software to be integrated with one another, then uh, they find it complex. They, of course, find it expensive. And then they don't um, proceed to basically uh, have a standard IT infrastructure, which costs them differently. And sometimes uh, they are the victim of data loss. They are the victim of data theft. Sometimes uh, they are the victim of some cyber, uh, some, some ransomware or cyber attack. And uh, they lose on the business. They lose on the business continuity also. Many a times they are competitively exploited. 
So standardization of IT infrastructure is not a choice. Basically, it is a compulsion for every MSME. And they are not able to do it because they find it expensive because it requires so many different uh, components. Uh, it, they find it complex also because uh, SMEs don't have very good knowledge in IT. So basically, um, nowadays or many years, we are the pioneer in that particular genre of uh, IT infrastructure, which we call it IT in a box. So uh, we always suggest that you can save huge cost by adopting IT in a box kind of solution, which serves as a file server, storage, domain controller, endpoint controls, VPN server, mail distribution and vigilance system, firewall, backup solution, and device hardening. So everything put together is built in one single box uh, as multiple services. And because it is one single box, it uses less hardware, so it costs less. Because it is a single software, uh, it is less complex, it is simpler, and MSMEs find it uh, very, very uh, convincing that, okay, um, we need all these things that we know. We did not do it because we found it expensive and complex. But now, IT in a box, it is affordable and it is simple. Why not to do it? So IT in a box solution is strongly suggested um, when SMEs want to standardize their IT infrastructure. I'll just give you the glimpse of IT in a box solution, how it looks. Uh, we are the pioneer in making IT in a box solution. There are so many available. Uh, you can check many of them. I will just show you the glimpse of IT in a box, which is made by Synersoft. We have branded it as black box. Yeah, I request my uh, colleague to basically uh, show the console of black box. I would like to make some point here by showing the complex con console. So this is IT in a box. Just see that uh, you can, in the sing single interface, you can control mail, you can control internet, you can do device hardening, you can take backup or configure the backup. Um, you can have a um, firewall. Um, destruction is one of the um, one of the modules which uh, is required for compliance purpose. Whenever uh, we give out any hardware, um, you know, either by selling it or by disposing it. Uh, we need to destroy the data in case the organization is uh, subject to compliance. So that is also there. So in single single interface, you have a mail system, you have internet firewall, you have uh, a proxy server, you can control internet, you can have hardening of the devices also. So this is what uh, IT in a box kind of solution looks like. Yeah, can you give back the screen to me, please? So uh, uh, we strongly suggest, and as per our estimate, if you go for an IT in a box solution for an MSME, it saves approximately 70, 65 to 70% of the cost. And it makes the things very simple and it makes the things very plug and play kind. So uh, this is how you can very well save huge cost on IT in a box uh, solution also. Now we'll move to the next part where we can save significant cost and that is not for one time, that is for year on year. We will see that now. So now uh, most of us know that uh, every organization requires good secure email system uh, because nowadays email frauds, email phishing, uh, cyber attacks through email, ransomware attacks through email are so rampant. So we cannot uh, just compromise on the quality of the email service provider and uh, we want a very good email services. And uh, because of that, most of us use Google or most of us use Microsoft email service. Now these email services are very, very expensive email services. It costs a lot. And for an MSME, it is a huge cost. So I would suggest you can save huge uh, uh, cost on your email subscription year on year by adopting DNS splitting technology. Now, DNS splitting technology is a very different and very unique technology. I will explain how it works. Uh, let's say, for example, you have 50 users, uh, email users, and let's say you are subscribing to Google Workspace and you have 30 GB of, uh, 30 GB of uh, uh, mailbox for each 50, for, for each of the 50 users. So you would be spending 1,25,000 rupees for 30 GB mailbox for all 50 users. And that's a significant cost. 
Now, um, there are two problems here. One, let's say one of the user wants to basically upgrade from uh, 30 GB, the next slab in Google is two terabyte. And most of the times Google has a policy that if you upgrade any one account to two terabyte from 30 GB, uh, you have to upgrade all the accounts. And then your cost uh, becomes approximately uh, five lakhs of rupees because the two TB box is 10,000 rupees and uh, you have to upgrade for all the users. You don't have a choice that for so many users, I will upgrade this and for so many users, I will upgrade this. So basically, um, uh, I'm, I'm coming to a point where you can even reduce the cost. I'll tell you now, uh, when you pay 2,500 rupees per user, let's say very basic price, uh, it is having a lot of features and most of your users might not use all those features. So basically you might have your management team or senior executive team, uh, which require all the features of that particular Google workspace. But most of the users who sit in the office all the time, check their emails either on computers or on your mobile, and uh, they don't really use all those advanced features of Google. That is where you can, uh, you can think about DNS splitting technology. Now this DNS splitting technology, what it does is uh, it keeps all your, uh, um, let's say now you have out of 50, you have 10 email IDs, which are your senior management people uh, who would like to, you know, use all the services of Google workspace. So for the rest of the 40, uh, 40 users, you have to pay 2,500 rupees per user per year. Instead, what we suggest that you can create one single account you can make all those 40 users as their alias accounts and uh, you can use DNS splitting technology. Now this DNS splitting technology will connect to this particular uh, um, buffer account. We call it, let's say buffer account in which all the users are alias. So any user of those number of aliases, any user receives an email from outside world, it will fall in that particular big account. And uh, then DNS splitter will download that email uh, all those emails and then it will find out that which email is meant for which user and then it will have its own mailboxes in which it will file that particular mail so and then the user instead of connecting to this buffer account will connect to dns splitter either through um, browser or through email client uh, through imap or pop protocol and then uh, he or she can see their e emails and this is how DNS technology works and just understand the impact. Uh, for those, those 40 users, you would have spent 1 lakh rupees, 2,500 rupees uh, for 40 users, you would have spent 1 lakh rupees. But here in this case, you have spent only one account, which is 2,500 rupees for those 40 users. And then you have spent some money on DNS splitter you have spent some money on cloud storage so that all those mailboxes on DNS Peter has enough space and it has saved a huge cost. It, it would save at least 70 to 80% of the cost for those other users who are not going to use all the services. So this is something which is very much uh, uh, shown. Uh, so you have an alias account in which all the users' emails will fall. Then you have DNS Peter technology which is a com and common storage for all the mailboxes. It will pull this particular alias account and then it will distribute all the emails in different mailboxes, all those alias, alias accounts. So these alias accounts will connect to this particular account through IMAP or POV protocol and they can check their emails uh, as they want. We will see how it works. Uh, I will show you the DNS Twitter technology, which is inbuilt technology with black box. You can also have other brands also in DNS splitter technology. So I request my colleague to first uh, look at, uh, go to the uh, console and show the, um, and show the mail DNS splitter technology, mail part of it. So here you, are go to, you can go to mail, click on that. So now go to pop user first, pop. Here, uh, you can configure the buffer account. So here I will put in the credentials of the buffer account so that all the emails of all the aliases. Then uh, you have distribution list. 
sorry you have a mail users so in in the inside the dms reader you can have various mailboxes you can create various mailboxes and then you can go to distribution list and then you can define that if the email is received on Vishal, it should be received on Vishal's mailbox on DNS Peter. If it is received on Rajendra, it should be uh, received in the Rajendra's mailbox. And then these mailboxes are full-fledged mailbox available on POP and IMAP, and users can use it either on uh, uh, mobile phone or um, desktops, and they can very easily um, make sure that, um, you know, they have basic email facility and organization does not have to spend a lot of money on that and uh what they will not have they will not have google interface they will not have google um, services like drive and all these services when you are looking at email service you are not actually look at looking at all those services and for those 10 users you know for whom you have kept uh, all the services active, you just end up paying 2,500 rupees only for those users. So instead of paying 125,000 rupees per year, you might end up paying maybe 30, 40,000 rupees um, per year. And that is a huge, huge cost saving. Um, we will see the client part of it. So you can configure this DNS reader email boxes in Thunderbird as well as in the, um, in the browser. Can we show the browser part of it? So this is someone, uh, uh, someone's email ID, which is not having all those privileges of a Google account. Of course, Cinesoft uses Google services only, but they get this kind of interface or if they want to check their emails on webmail, if they want to check their emails through Outlook or Thunderbird, they can very well use it. So this is what, uh, this is what they get. And let's say if I am using all the Google services, I will be getting this kind of facility. Yeah, like give me the screen back, please. So I'll be using this kind of uh, services, you know, let's say this is my mailbox. So if you have seen Rajendra is part of that buffer account with alias, and then Rajendra's emails are uh, created. Similarly here, uh, I'm getting all Google interface. So I'm paying 2500 rupees for my account and for Rajendra, the cost is hardly 50 rupees per year. Uh, of course, only for the DNS splitter, but then he will require to get the uh, uh, storage space also, but overall the cost uh, saving is huge. So uh, this is how you can use uh, a DNS splitter and save uh, a lot of cost, you know, on your email subscription. And that is, that can be done year on year. Now we will uh, look at some other avenues where we can save the cost. Uh, now you can save the cost on application virtualization also. I'll tell you, most of us, when we want to give access to tally or such an ERP, what we do is, uh, what we do is uh, we give them remote desktop. We set up a terminal server. We install the application on there. Then we give remote desktop connection either over VPN or on static IP to the user. This is very dangerous. Number one, um, RDP protocol is the most abused port or protocol uh, for the backdoor entry of ransomware. Uh, second number is it is very, very hardware intensive one. Uh, most of you would agree that uh, RAM and processor is never enough when you have a terminal server which is being accessed over uh, RDP. So here there is a concept of application virtualization where instead of showing entire desktop, we only show the uh, application. And in that particular application, we can uh, make sure that we don't have to set up terminal server. We don't have to use RDB protocol and only keyboard strokes and mouse clicks are transmitted. Um, then uh, there's no need of terminal server. So there's no need to buy RDP cals and it gives better security because it does not run on uh, RDP protocol. So this is how we can very well save a lot of cost um, uh, on application virtualization as well as... Uh, um, then another point is um, how we can save the cost, you know, on 
virtual cloud setup. So many of us, you know, subscribe to cloud services because cloud is a buzzword nowadays. But uh, there is a concept of virtual private cloud. You can have your own virtual private cloud co-located either on data center or you can create a data center inside your premise and you can uh, use virtual private cloud. Why I am saying this for MSMEs? Because most of the MSMEs have concentrated number of users at one place. So at HO, there would be large number of users and rest of the users are one or two per city or per locality. In that case, when you subscribe to a cloud service, what happens? All the users have to go to the cloud, even they, if they are sitting in the office. But while majority of your users are sitting in the office and your um, file server or application server is in the same local area network, your internet bandwidth can be very well utilized, can very well be saved. And only for those scattered users who are working remotely, only for them you have to provide VPN facility. So that will give you a very good advantage on VPN cost also. So uh, this is how we can save cost on uh, hardware and software investment or bandwidth cost. So before we move to the next slide, uh, I request Aditi to uh, launch the poll, please. This is slightly longer poll, so please allow 30 more seconds. Okay, sir. So as we uh, see on the screen, basically, uh, the attendees, 38% of the attendees represent multi locations with remote users kind of organization, 23 represent single location remote uh, user kind of organization, 31% 15 to 100 computers and 8% 100 plus uh, computer users. So here, most of the attendees belong to SMEs. Now, uh, coming to the prioritization of the objectives. So 54% of the attendees uh, software license compliance is their important IT objective they want to achieve. 46% want to achieve data centralization. 31% want to achieve data loss prevention, deletion, infection, and disaster. 62% want to achieve remote access of data files. 15% want to achieve remote access of applications. 31% uh, uh, want to achieve data theft prevention, 38% want to uh, uh, achieve data security for work from home users. So a uh, lot of people are curious about uh, remote access. So we will see how remote access can be done through application virtualization instead of having a, uh, a remote desktop. So I request my uh, technical team to uh, connect to a virtualized application. Let's connect to a user's computer or laptop and we'll, we'll see how this remote user can access that. So can you log on to a laptop uh, on which let's say Tally or some ERP or HRMS is virtually accessible. So let's say this is a computer system uh, of a user 
and uh, there is a application virtualization software black box is also having it you know like we call it a, a black box triple a access application anywhere uh, there are such many software available user has to just double click on that so whatever applications we have virtualized will be virtually loaded on user's computer system please understand that uh, on this particular laptop uh, tally or hrms clients are not installed uh, they are virtually loaded. When they are virtually loaded, we are not using RDP protocol. We are not using terminal server. And that's the reason we don't have to have very high grade of hardware. So let's say this is EHR, ESSL HRMS. So it is working and it is working very fast because uh, it only transmits the keyboard strokes and um, mouse clicks. Just see the speed. We are on VPN. Uh, show the tally, please. So you can access tally also. So it is a very, very, uh, uh, very, very effective and efficient uh, technology, which can save a lot of bandwidth as well as which can save a lot of hardware cost and a lot of software cost. So uh, this is about uh, application virtualization. We just demonstrated access application anywhere uh, module of black box, uh, which is a virtualization module. And you can think about it and you can actually save a lot of cost. Yeah, please give me the screen back, please. So now we move to the uh, summary part of it. So basically, uh, what we have seen is by making use of uh, um, refurbished uh, hardware and alternate software like WPS Office or Office uh, Home or uh, basically Thunderbird, we can save huge cost on hardware and software. We can use uh, IT in a box genre of the products for standardizing the IT and achieve the IT policy objectives. We can use uh, application virtualization for saving the bandwidth cost as well as saving the hardware and software cost. We can use DNS Peter technology to reduce our email subscription cost year on year and if you see that you can save 18 percent in bandwidth you can save 50 percent in hardware and you can save 70 percent in softwares and subscriptions so this is uh, something very interesting we came across and we know that uh, uh, this kind of ideas are not just ideas they are actually implemented for years and Synersoft has implemented so many of these ideas. We have saved a lot of cost and we have saved a lot of capital investment. And that capital actually goes to better avenues like R&D, product development, customer service. And that is how it contributes more positively to the business. So basically, when you save the cost, you always have better return on investment. So uh, this is all about today's webinar. Before we move to question answer session, uh, I request Aditi to launch the last poll. Yeah, so 
as we see on the screen, 53% uh, of the attendees like the idea of refurbished computer, 65% of the attendees like the idea of IT in a box, 35% like the idea of alternate software like WPS Office, MS Office Home, and 35% of the attendees like the idea of DNS splitting technology. So uh, I am happy to see that you like these ideas and you might want to implement it at your customer's place or at the place where you are working. And you can actually positively contribute uh, by your knowledge and by your ideas to your organization so that they have better return on their investment. So we can move to the uh, question answer session. I think we have approximately 15 minutes, 13 minutes. Uh, so you can ask any question you want on this. Uh, I'll be happy to answer. You can use question answer palette or you can raise your hand. We can very well uh, unmute you and you can ask your question. Yeah, we have a question. Will it be compatible on thin client? Uh, I mean, I need to understand uh, which idea you are talking about. Are you talking about refurbished computer? You are talking about IT in a box? You are talking about emails? Or you are talking about application virtualization? Yeah, Mr. Vora. Uh, I think uh, IT in a box, okay. Uh, so see, thin client, uh, uh, basically when you use thin client, I, 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 it's a very good question. Let me explain that. Let me first uh, answer this, but then I'll take other question. See, psychologically, we understand that uh, we save cost on thin client. It is not true. I'll tell you why. Let's say a, 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 a i3 computer, a good computer system would cost you, let's say, 20,000 rupees if it is not refurbished. And uh, you can have all your users work on their computers, while thin client would cost you, let's say, 9,000 rupees. <laughs> but then it will require a very powerful terminal server. And that terminal server cost has to be divided and added to this 9,000 rupees cost. And most of the times that cost would be even more than this particular computer's cost. And that is the reason uh, thin client does not uh, really save the cost. Now coming to your question about IT in a box, whether it is compatible with thin client, let me tell you, uh, IT in a box can be used um, with thin client for applying the policies. But at the same time, IT in a box solution is not as cost effective as it is for um, desktop environment because thin client will require you to invest in terminal server, will require you to invest in hardware, which is sufficient for running so many nodes. Now coming to one moment, I just disclose this question. I've answered Mr. Vora's question. Now coming to Ajay Chauhan, is DNS splitter legal in India? Yeah, it is legal in India. There is nothing illegal about it. It is not at all illegal. Uh, DNS splitter is legal in India. Uh, Mr. Banerjee is asking, want to review more in details about use of refurbished computers and IT in a box? Please arrange one call back. Yeah, Aditi, can you convey the message to the team? Um, we can connect with Mr. Banerjee. Shall I do that? Yeah, any other questions? So we have uh, seven, eight more minutes to take care of a few more questions. Yeah, we have one more. 
is it mobile enabled in in a uh, mobile enabled it in a box yes uh, if you talk about see there are various types of it in a box solution so uh, uh, if you consider a black box as it in a box solution it is called a product called mduo and that is a mobile enabled so on ios or android you can have work profile and you can have uh, you can have personal profile and then you can and, um, enforce the organization's policy in the work profile and the data between work profile and uh, personal profile will not be exchangeable. Yeah, we can take a few more questions. Yeah, I think Aditi, we can conclude in case we get any question, I will answer that. Oh. Yeah, we have one just. Can we add email of different uh, providers? Uh, you can add email of different providers, but I wonder um, if you have single domain, how you will have different providers because ultimately for each domain, you can have MX record pointing to one provider only it is google workspace so if you have a single domain you will necessarily have one provider only in case you have multiple domains one from google workspace another from ms office dns splitter has no problem it can be integrated with both yeah Aditi. Thank you, sir, for such a detailed, insightful, and knowledgeable session. We hope you all have learned and enjoyed the session. On behalf of the Sinosoft team, I thank everyone for attending the session. Please fill out the survey form, which you will get when the session is session ended, to give us your valuable feedback. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope uh, you all had uh, some takeaway from this particular session. Thank you very much.